I use guitar tricks for learning and practicing guitar. Once I get to a certain point, I no longer need the videos. I just need the audio and, well, a lot more time. For a while, I just used videos and the associated tools on the Guitar Tricks site, but then I discovered that my practice routine was both more fun and more effective when I switched over to practicing with a digital audio workstation. Let me give you a high-level overview of what I'm doing first so you can decide if this approach is for you. This is my current guitar practice regimen in Reaper. I will be giving details on how I set this up, specifically in Reaper, a little later, but I suspect you can do the same thing in your favorite DAW. When I'm first learning a song, I practice against the full versions of the songs. The full versions are here on the bottom. Once I have the timing and parts down, I switch over to what Guitar Tricks calls the jam tracks, which is the full performance minus the guitar part or parts. Those are here. The key to making this super convenient in Reaper is custom actions. I have one for each track. When I hit a shortcut, in this case a button on a MIDI controller, it does several things. It jumps to the track I want, it puts the play cursor at the beginning of the track, it removes any existing solos and puts the desired track into solo. I could have made it auto play, but I prefer to hit a second button to start the song. I also use a particular Amplitude 5 preset for each track, and I could have added that to each track, but for now I still use the AT5 host and a pedal board for that. Practicing any song only requires hitting the right shortcut, stepping on my pedal board, and hitting play. There are several more features I have set up that made all this worthwhile for me. One is I have other shortcuts that jump me forward and back a little bit in the song, so when I make a mistake, like I frequently do, I can repeat that phrase and try again. I also have one that jumps back to the beginning of the track, so starting over is a single tap away. Two, when I know a section is problematic, I can drag over that section and hit a different shortcut to put that selected section in looping mode. Then, when I hit play, Reaper plays the selected area, and when it reaches the end, it starts over again. You'll notice that on some songs, I've identified various parts like the verse, chorus, and solos. This gives me visual markers I can use when making that selection. I typically don't want just the solo, for example, but a little bit of lead in and a little bit of transition to get out. If my fingers need a break at the end, I tend to make that part afterwards a little bit longer. Three, and this is perhaps the most helpful thing when learning, and that is the ability to speed up and slow down any song in 1% increments and keep it pitch adjusted with a single tap. I only need this for songs when I'm learning them, so speeding up and slowing down can be enabled or disabled for any song. Guitar tricks can also speed up or slow down, but it's pretty coarse. 75% or 90% or full speed are the only usable options. I found on some leads in particular that working my way up 1% at a time is much less frustrating. My physical setup moves me a bit away from the keyboard, so I have all this set up so I don't need it very much, if at all. My mouse is wireless, so it's a little more mobile, so I do use it a little bit. So I use my MIDI controller to trigger all the shortcuts. But if you're close to your keyboard, there would be no problem just using normal keyboard shortcuts for all of this. If this interests you, stick around and I'll get into the details. If it doesn't and you want to pick up some Reaper tricks, you might also stick around. I learned a few Reaper related things while doing this. I will admit using a DAW is a pretty heavyweight lift for practicing. I would say though that as a musician, the time you spend learning a DAW will likely be time well spent and useful beyond practicing. That said, this is not going to be a full Reaper tutorial. I'm going to talk about the specific things you need for the practice project I demoed. If you're new to Reaper, trying to understand the details will be like drinking from the fire hose. Don't worry about the details, just get a general sense of the tools you'll need and what is possible. At the end of this video, I'll provide some links to a couple of excellent video-based approaches to come up to speed on the basics of Reaper. Let's start with a new Reaper project, and I'll recreate everything from scratch. The key to most things in Reaper is the Actions panel. In fact, the shortcut to Actions is the question mark, and it's the first one I committed to memory. You can, in effect, search the Actions using the filter menu, so whenever I want to learn how to do something in Reaper, this is where I come. Most of the time you want Reaper to remember any customizations you do from project to project, if you don't mind adding some shortcuts to your main Reaper section, you don't have to do what I'm about to do. But in this case, I can get closer to a clean slate for the purposes of this instructional video by switching over the actions from main to an alternate set. And I did already do this for my practice project 
which you can see here. We'll use a new one now. I decided I only needed this specific set of actions when I practice guitar, not when I use Reaper for other uses, so this allowed me to isolate them. By default, Reaper has all the shortcuts in each of the alternates. Since many shortcuts are for editing audio, I don't want most of them. However, let me grab this section in the middle, starting with the escape through zoom out horizontal by shift clicking. Then I'll scroll down and also select my favorite shortcut for getting to the action list. The key map button will let me export the selected items. Now I can go back to the key map and remove all the shortcuts for this section. Then one more time and import my saved ones. Since we're on the key map button, it's a convenient time to point out that this is where I renamed main alt one to main practice songs using the rename current section option. While limiting the number of shortcuts does keep you from accidentally hitting one, it's also going to prove useful to sort by shortcuts and see our custom actions and not a lot of other shortcuts that we don't need. Let's also go to the project settings using the info icon in the toolbar and set the time base for items, envelopes, markers to time. This is going to be helpful for later when we set up the feature to speed up or slow down songs. Setting it to time makes a track ignore any BPM setting and just plays a track at its native time. Let's also set up our project BPM to 100. While BPM is for beats per minute, we're just going to use it as a percentage. So we are in effect setting it to 100%. Whenever we add a track, we want to make sure the BPM is set to 100. Let's create our first custom action. If you're using an alternate section, go ahead and switch to that section. Click the new action button. First, if a track is still playing, I want it to stop. Next, I want to use Track Unsolo All Tracks. The next step isn't strictly necessary, but somehow I have found myself in the situation where nothing plays, and it turns out it was due to all the items being muted. So next, I want to unmute all items. Now we have all the tracks out of solo, and no items are muted. Now tracks could be muted, but the solo feature overrides a mute, so if a track is both muted and soloed, you'll hear it. Therefore, we only need to add a solo, unsolo tracks item. Next, we want to move the play cursor to the start of all the items in the track when the button is hit. Finally, add a go to start of project action. Let's give this action the name unsolo solo go to start. It's a bit unwieldy, but it's only going to be used by other custom actions we create. Speaking of which, let's create another custom action to use this action. Use the new action button again, and this time I'll name it first, track one only. I need two commands, track, select track one, then our newly minted custom unsolo solo go to start action. We can save this with OK, then in the shortcut area we can click add. If you plan on using your keyboard, you might just assign one to this action. I have the handy dandy Sonido Z1 controller and I like to use the 16 pads in the lower left to send out a MIDI note command to select tracks. So I'll just touch the pad I want for track one and Reaper captures it. By the way, my hope in using MIDI commands for this was that Reaper would respond to these pads even if I happen to have Amplitube or some other app as the frontmost app. But to date, I haven't figured out how to make that work reliably. Sometimes it works with other apps frontmost, sometimes it doesn't. I, I've had the best luck if I make sure Reaper is frontmost and I use some MIDI commands. And then when I switch to, like, say, AT5, the commands seem to work. But I'm not sure what the magic sequence is needed to make it work more consistently. Now it's just a matter of rinse and repeat. You can see the advantage to our custom action. If we decide to change something in the sequence of steps, we just change our unsolo solo go to start action rather than repeating those steps for every track we want to practice. There are select track commands for 99 tracks. If you have more tracks than that, you can always set up a new project. Reaper supports both having multiple projects open at once, although that is not allowed by default. But in this case, you're better off using the Project Tabs feature of Reaper to have a set list in each tab. I like being able to see all my songs on the screen at once, and while I could compress the vertical height even more, I think 16 tracks might be my maximum. We have the custom actions we need, so it's time to create our first track. 
We can either double click over here on the left to do that, but since we have to drag in an audio file anyway, let's just create a track by doing that. Let's check the BPM and make sure it's set to 100 first. Again, we set our default time base to time so that by default, none of our tracks will be affected by changing the BPM. But when we do that, we do want 100 to represent the native time. The idea of having the default set to time is I'm generally going to learn one song at a time and I just need to make that song adjust tempo. So our tempo is 100 BPM. Then we right click on the item and using the item settings option at the top, we can select set item time base to beats auto stretch at tempo changes. Now as the BPM changes, Snatch it back. the song change tempo and pitch adjust for the new tempo. I want to be able to easily move the tempo up and down so I created a shortcut for that. If we go back to actions using the question mark let's filter on project tempo and we have a few options. I like to increase or decrease by one beat per minute. I'm typically in the 80 to 100 range so it's not that many taps to cycle through the whole range. But if you want you can use 10 BPM or 0.1 BPM and set up multiple shortcuts. Take markers are a new feature in Reaper 7. We can right click on an item and select take markers. Then in the sub menu, use add edit take marker at cursor or one of the other options, but this quickly becomes painful. Instead, let's go to our trusty actions and with the question mark, we can filter to add take marker and we can see there is a shift F2 shortcut for add edit take marker at mouse position. This is better, but it's not what I like the best. I like to hit play on a track and pause at a section of interest and then type the name of the take marker. So I want the item add edit take marker at play position or edit cursor. I'll assign that to F2. Now I can select a track, hit play. Hit pause when I hit a section I want to annotate, then hit F2 and add a description. Set the color to something decently visible and click OK and then just rinse and repeat. If you end up with take markers you don't need, holding down the Option key on the Mac, Alt key on the Windows and clicking on the take marker deletes it. You can also move them left and right if they don't end up where you wanted. Now that we have visual indicators for sections of our song, it makes it easier for the mouse to grab and select an area. Normally a time selection is made from the top, but I wanted to do it in each track near my take markers. In Reaper Preferences, under Editing Behavior, we can select Mouse Modifiers. In the top bar under Context, we want Media Item and Left Drag. In the window below, we can double click Default Action and change from Move Item to Select Time. Since while practicing, I'm not using my keyboard, I change the default. When I'm using Reaper for other purposes, my keyboard is right in front of me, so I use the control key as a modifier to make Reaper move items. However, I think most people will want to use one of the unused modifier keys. If you don't want to change the defaults, you'll still want to minimize your tracks moving on the screen. You can right click on the lock icon in the toolbar and keep it from moving both horizontally and vertically and keep it from trimming the edges by enabling these three checkboxes. And now when you click on the lock icon and turn lock on, those three actions are locked out. If I drag a new practice track in and I want to trim the edges or move it, I can just unlock and make the adjustments and lock again. Now that we have a convenient way for selecting a section to be looped, Again, there is a Reaper option that can get us in trouble if it's turned off, so it's worth knowing about. Under Options, make sure Loop Points Linked to Time Selection is turned on. So we have our section for repeat practice highlighted. There is one last step for completing looping. And that's turning on Loop Mode and automatically going to our Time Selection with a single button. Once more onto the Actions panel. We want another custom action. I'll name this one Loop Selection. The first thing to do is toggle repeat. Then go to start of time selection. You can assign this shortcut and it works okay, but getting out of looping requires the mouse or more shortcuts. I prefer to have an action that does a little more and I like to trigger it with a MIDI control change message. A CC message will send along different data bytes on two consecutive presses. 
So it lets us use it like a toggle button. That is, we get a loop on and a loop off action with a single button. This is completely optional and I agree it's a little complicated, but it does highlight a cool action that Reaper has. One thing that makes this seem complicated is we don't have a do this action under these condition statements. We have a negative logic one that lets us skip a step under certain conditions. I'll walk through this twice, once with the negative logic sort of as the commands are written, but also a second time explaining what I want to do rather than what I want to skip. First, we had a skip next action step. When the CC message comes in with a low value, looping is being turned off. We want to skip going to the start of the time selection in that case. The next skip statement is when the CC data byte is high, meaning the looping is already on. Then we want to skip going to the start of the project. Finally, if the value is high, meaning looping is on, we want to skip the stop step. Here's, here's thinking about it more like as if it were a do this command. These two steps really say, if we are turning on looping, go to the start of the time selection. The next two say, if we are turning looping off, go to the start of the project. And then finally, if we are turning looping off, stop the playback. I find it a little painful that Reaper doesn't have a way to just force repeat to be on or off. But if they do, I can't find it. Toggle is generally pretty good, but it can cause things to get out of sync with my CC button. Now I have a MIDI controller that lights up blue when it has sent a zero and lights up red when it has sent a 127. As long as I make sure the loop is off when my button is blue, things are in sync. If you don't have visual feedback, but hitting your shortcut is turning on loop mode, but sending your playhead to the start of the project, then just manually click the button once with the mouse and your shortcut should be back in sync. You know, it seems complicated, but once you set it up one time, you have this convenient way to get into looping mode and practice a section over and over. And then when your fingers start to bleed, you only have to hit the same button again to save yourself. If you are new to Reaper, let me point out two video resources I have found helpful. The first one is right on the reaper.fm homepage. Go to videos. And there are a lot of mostly short videos on specific topics by Kenny Goya. One nice trick here is you can expand the entire list and then use your browser search to find a lesson. When you click a video, it might start playing off screen up above. You can scroll up to see it, but you can also watch it on YouTube. Kenny also has a lot of playlists in YouTube you can use. This is how I learned, but you have to go through a lot of videos to get the basics. If you are okay with sitting down and watching for an hour, I would recommend Adam Steele's Reaper 101 2024, the basics video. Adam has retired from YouTube, but these are still great. Search for Adam Steele. Go to playlists. There should be a Reaper 101 2023 series. Click on the view full playlist. The second one goes through all the basics. All of these are good, but many of them do cover the same material Kenny covers. So watch whichever one appeals to you more. I hope you found this worthwhile and it makes practicing guitar more fun and more productive. I will say it really helped me both have fun and learn the tougher parts of songs. Rock in peace. <laughs>